going to a training or going on vacation. Okay, as usual in trainings I do, I say learn from my mistakes rather than repeating them. It's important to either get paid in full up front or at least hold a credit card with payment, payment pre-authorization and even that isn't sufficient. So we've started to charge a registration fee to make sure the credit card actually works. That fee applies to your first day of treatment, but now we know we have a working credit card. Learn from my mistakes, don't make the same ones. The last thing you need is unpaid no-shows, or unpaid shows for that matter. Um, you know, we're presumably in this business to help people not to be debt collectors. So we try to do one and not the other. One way we manage this is we offer a 10% discount for prompt payment. And everybody wants that 10% discount and suddenly we don't have to chase anybody around. It's pretty nice. If you're doing this with people that may be coming from out of town, create an information sheet with the information that they want to know. Like where they should stay, what your office address is, um, where the supermarket is, where they can you know, go to the Y or the athletic club or you know, where they can work out. Just the things people need to know when they're traveling. For one thing, if you don't have that, they're going to bug you with all kinds of questions. And if you do have it, they're going to feel taken care of. So it saves you trouble and it's better for the client. This is kind of a debate. Let's say you're booking somebody for four days. Do you charge them for four days? Or do you charge them for the time they might only actually use? What if they're done in three days? You can argue this either way. So, whoops, sorry. Um, you can argue this either way. I'll tell you how we do it. There we go. Well, I'll tell you how we don't do it. Some people I know, they say, I'm holding these four days for you. I can't look anybody else in those four days, so you pay for my time. And people understand that. So people will respect that. We don't do it that way. We say, look, you're coming in from Missouri or wherever you're coming from. Um, I think you're only going to need three or four days. Let's book five just in case so you don't have to. You don't want to book three and a half days for somebody and then wish, you know, they're, what are they going to do, come back for one more day from Missouri? So I would rather hold five days for you so that you have it if you need it. And if you don't need it, so what? You get out early, and we only charge you for the time you use in half-day increments. So you know what? If you leave half a day, half an hour early one day, you're still paying for the day. But if you leave before lunch, you're not paying for the after-lunch half of the day. We do it that way because we want people to feel free to book as much time as they might need. We think that that's good clinical practice. Um, and we also do it that way because that's part of our self-care. If somebody does book through Friday afternoon and they leave on Thursday morning, it's like, okay, I can take a walk, I can go swimming, I can get my paperwork done, I can work on that paper I've been writing. And that's self-care. Having dead time is self-care also, as long as it's not too much dead time, then you don't eat. Uh, so anyway, if you do intensive therapy, you're going to have to decide which way you want to work. Clients prefer our way because they, don't, they like to not have to pay for extra time they didn't use, but they will respect the other way as well. Now, if you go to our website, which is, let me see if we're here, hold on, therapyretreat.org, we've got all this stuff written out, you can use it as a model, you know, we've, we've been working on this for years. And so we've worked out a lot of kinks. 
Now, you can't steal something word for word because that's stealing, but you can certainly use it as a model to figure out how you want to um, do things yourself. So it's there, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can just find a wheel and then refashion it to suit you. So, I believe that before too many more years go by, intensive therapy will be regarded as one of the standard methods of getting your therapy done. As one of the treatments of choice, it will be a checkbox on those insurance company forms. And they will actually prefer it. The insurance companies will prefer it because ultimately they're spending less money and getting more satisfied customers. And by the way, there's also a medical offset, which is for every dollar you spend on psychotherapy, you save $6 overall on medical costs. Now the problem is that it may take three to five years to get that savings and people might be in a different insurance company by then. So that's an economic issue that may make insurance companies slower to embrace intensive therapy, but they will sooner or later. There will still be plenty of other types of therapy focused on coping skills, communication, relationships, etc. But ultimately for many or most people, going to therapy will largely be like getting a medical procedure or taking your car to the shop, a day or a few at the clinic. Maybe a recovery period and then back to normal life. And this is because we have tools now to facilitate memory reconsolidation, to facilitate trauma healing. Questions, comments, complaints? Yes. So people who are already trauma therapists always ask this question. My clients wiped out after an hour, how could they do it all day? I don't know. And yet they do, and I've also been a client, by the way. Um, although uh, it sort of suits my style, so I wasn't surprised that I could do it, but um, I think people kind of get ready for it, and that's different. They sort of know they're going to do it, they, they've blocked out the time. Now, if you're using a method, we also go in chronological order through the memory, starting at age zero and working your way forward. And that takes a lot of the edge off the later memories, because let's say you've got an age five memory that's this much of a wound. And then you have an age 10 memory that happens to hit that sore spot and feels like this. If you jump in on the age 10 memory, it's messy and it's, it's going to take longer and it's going to be painful. If you work on the age 5 memory first, it's only like this. When you get to the age 10 memory, it's only like this. So I think part of it is that when we work in chronological order, it's not quite as emotionally intense for clients. Part of it is a mystery. Part of it is that they're preparing, and part of it is that they don't have to work until 4.59. Some clients do, but sometimes people, it gets to be 3.45 or 4, and a client will say, I'm fried, I'll see you tomorrow. And, you know, we're like, good work, you did what you could. So, it's a good question, and I have a few ideas, but I can't say I exactly have the answer. But what I can say is, you know, we've, we've done, we've had over 500 intensive therapy clients by now. That's a lot, and they're doing it. Other, yep? What do you rely on the standard To what degree do we rely on the standard EMDR model? Okay. Um, <clears throat> 
So when we're using EMDR or PC, which is the other method we use, we use a lot of both. Oh, sorry, it stands for progressive counting. It's another trauma resolution method. It's been, well, I won't get into it here, but it's, it's another one. Um, when we're in a trauma resolution session, we're using standard protocol. Yeah, we're not modifying the procedure. Okay. Other questions or comments? I see somebody in the back. Yeah. That's you. Stand up and talk loud, please. Yes, it's a wonderful model that most people can't do because most clients can't afford to pay for it and most therapists don't have room in their schedule to do it. And so it's right now it's innovative and we're busy trying to disrupt the system and change the system so that there's more room for it. Um, about half of our work is with people who pay out of pocket some of them just sold their company and have millions of dollars they don't know what to do with. Some of them are borrowing a few hundred here and a few hundred there from family members to try to get their treatment done and everybody in between. So we do have some people that come up with the money and then about half of our clients we treat for free because we have the Victims of Crime grant. Uh, there are various other unique sources of funding you know, the Catholic Church has a fund for people that were abused within the church. And so there's odds and ends. And yes, most, most clients can't access this, and most therapists don't have room in their practice to do it. So this is an innovative practice, and it's going to take a lot of changes in systemic ways before it can become a normal practice which is one of the reasons that we and several colleagues around the world are collecting data and publishing papers because we are trying to change the standard of care in this one. Other? Okay, so length of treatment, um, I've certainly done several one-day treatments. I've done many one-week treatments, many two- to four-week treatments. Because you know well that some clients, there's a lot more work to do than other clients, right? And so it's the same in intensive therapy as it is in hour per week therapy, that some clients are quicker and some clients are slower. My rough equivalency is compared to doing the same treatment approach in hour per week, we get about one year's worth of hour per week therapy done in about one week of intensive. So if you've got a client that's gonna take five years, that's gonna be roughly five weeks of intensive. It's still, it's still a lot of work. Other questions or comments? Yes. Um, I know you mentioned just using the standard protocol, but in starting with from A to zero, do you also do affect resetting in the early trauma protocol to ensure they're getting out of any non-verbal trauma that clients may not know is there? Okay, so the question is if we're going chronological order, how early do we start? We often start in the womb and we sometimes start even before that. It depends on the client and if we think it's necessary or not. And we have, I didn't specifically answer your question in terms of how we do it, but the different therapists do that different ways. No, that helps me. Okay. Other questions or comments or complaints? Yes. Just, you know, just I guess from Joanne's stand earlier, it seems like sometimes even though you've done the screening, 
sometimes people don't realize that you don't realize you're talking to a dissociative part and then you're in this intensive thing and all of a sudden some, some other dude shows up to the scene. I'm just curious, how do you deal with that? Okay, so the question is, what if our screening didn't catch what we wanted it to catch, and we find ourselves in a different situation than we expected, specifically involving somebody with um, dissociative identity disorder, and et cetera. So this does happen now and then, and then we have two or three staff meetings about it and figure out how we can improve our screening so that it doesn't happen again. And we've gotten pretty good at it, but it's, it's kind of a work in progress. And if there are questions, then we'll do a more thorough screening. You know, we'll have somebody fill out an MID, or we'll have the therapist that they might be going to do a second screening, and that's another half hour on the phone, and that therapist might. So we're getting better at it, but it's certainly a concern. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Yes? Can you say a little bit more about how you're uh, figuring out the so in general, I do a 10 verse list, and then so I have a lay of the land, and then try to figure, figure out what the client wants to do, what I want, and then if you're working chronologically from zero on up, how are you figuring out where all the things are? Okay. So the question is, how do we decide which memories we're going to be working on in which order? How do we get those memories? And I will answer that briefly, but I'll also say that we have an entire system, and our therapists have already all been through, you know, 20 days of training, because it's the seven and a half days for EMDR, and then another 14 for, yeah. So we, we have a whole system, we do it every step, and so when we get the list of worst things, we don't limit it to 10. We want to know everything. That doesn't mean we're talking all day, we don't let our clients tell the story, we just get the word or phrase. Um, and once we start hearing three or four things about the same family member, we say, okay, I get that there's a lot of stuff with that family member. What else would be on your list? So we don't get every example up front. We just say, if we, we would call that a cluster. Maybe that's the brother cluster or the domestic violence cluster or whatever. If it's a cluster, we, don't, we stop there. We say, okay, that's what else would be. So, so we get whatever's on their list, and then we go in chronological order. If there's a lot of early stuff, then we assume there might be preverbal stuff as well. And so then we'll start in the womb or earlier, and we just kind of work our way forward. When we get to a cluster, we work through the cluster, the first memory, the worst memory, the most recent, and then go through all of them. And then we go back to the list in chronological order and just work our way through. So it's, it's a pretty comprehensive approach, and it seems like it would take a lot of time, but I think it doesn't, because when you get to the memories that the client would identify as their worst memories, we've already cleaned up everything underneath, and it tends to go a lot smoother. You know, when we talk about looping, our therapists don't get that. It just doesn't happen to us. Of course, now it will next week, now that I've said that. But, <laughs> right, that's how it works. But the chronological approach tends to make things go smoother and quicker. Other questions or comments? Yes? Do you think doing one day a week for a period of several weeks can be immediate? The question is, can you do a hybrid model of instead of canceling all your clients and doing it all at once, what about one day a week for a while? <coughs> For certain clients, I think that would be perfect. And for certain clients, it would be a disaster. Because some clients, they're stable enough and contained enough that they can do a burst of it, go back to their life, come back to another burst, and that's great. And for some clients, once you get going, well, you better finish. Because if you leave them, even though, even if you spend 20 minutes trying to put them away at the end of the day, it might not do it because they might just get activated during the week and really destabilized. So we tend to try to get more done in larger chunks just to get through as much as we can 
for most clients, but then there are certain clients who can't do it that way, either for practical reasons or for psychological reasons, and they need smaller doses. And so part of our ongoing refinement of our intake procedure is to figure out which clients are which. And it tends to be the more severely disturbed and highly dissociated clients that the smaller doses are more appropriate. Okay. Other questions or comments? Don't be shy. Yes? What is the average um, cost for this intensive Well, yeah, the question is, what do we charge? The money question. We have fees on our website, so you can actually go and see the therapist rates there. We have everything from a couple thousand a day to a couple, 300 a day. That's, you know, before the 10% discount. So, you know, if you want the guy that wrote the books, you pay more. And, you know, I work for a nonprofit organization that supports our free work. And if you, you know, if you want to get your work done and you're just scraping by, scraping up a few dollars to do it, you work with the intern or the person that needs hours towards their license and you'll still get the job done. And then our very experienced, you know, our really solid experienced therapists, typically we're around a thousand a day, give or take. Other questions or comments? Oh, by the way, that's a lot of money for people. And it's very fair. You know, if you look at what therapists are charging at an hourly rate, um, this isn't out of line with that. Especially if you look at the cities, some of these therapists are charging 200 an hour, 300 an hour. So you can come and pay 1,000 a day and end up paying half of what you would have paid by staying home. So it is a lot of money to come up with for people, but the rates are, are within reason. Other questions or comments? Okay, well, um, thank you, enjoy your break. And I guess, it, what's the story with the break? Is it, did we start this break early or what's going on? <laughs>